the Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan podcast by night, all day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first episode of the Joe Rogan AI Experience. I'm your host, Joe Rogan, or at least that's what this AI model thinks I sound like. Let me tell you, folks, this is some next level stuff we've got going on here today. Every single word of this podcast has been generated with the help of ChatGPT, the cutting-edge AI language model developed by OpenAI. I am not the real Joe Rogan. Let me repeat it once more. I am not Joe Rogan, and the guests are not of the people they portray. This is purely fiction, just for fun, so don't go around making little clips for your TikToks and make the world believe I said things I never said. Nothing in this podcast should be taken as said by the real people they portray. This is purely for entertainment purposes and an experience showcasing the amazing advancements in AI technology. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into this AI-generated world. Let's get weird, folks. It's time to welcome our first guest to the show. And I've got to say, this is a big one. We've got none other than the CEO of OpenAI, Sam Altman, joining us today. Sam's been at the forefront of the AI industry for years, and it's an honor to have him on the show. So let's give a warm AI-generated welcome to Sam Altman. How are you doing, Sam? I'm doing great, Joe. Thanks for having me on the show. Sam, this whole AI-generated podcast thing is pretty wild. It's like we're living in the future, you know? Yeah, it's definitely a strange experience, but it's also incredibly exciting. The advancements in AI technology have come a long way. And it's amazing to see what we can achieve with the tools we already have at our disposal. So let's dive right in. Your company just released a new tool called ChatGPT. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is and what it does? Sure. So ChatGPT is an um, AI language model that's been trained on a massive amount of text data. What this means is that uh, it's able to generate text that's almost indistinguishable from text written by like a human. It does this by um, uh, using a process called deep learning where it's been trained on a uh, massive data set of text, and it's able to use that training to uh, generate new text that's coherent and grammatically correct. And the cool thing is that um, the more data it's trained on, the more accurate and diverse its responses can be. That's insane. So let's say I ask ChatGPT a question right now. It's going to use that deep learning process to generate an answer on the spot? Exactly. And what's even more impressive is that uh, it can also generate answers in a conversational style, which is why it's able to um, generate a podcast like this. It's able to keep track of the conversation and uh, generate responses that are relevant to the conversation at hand. Wow, that's seriously mind-blowing. So what do you see as the future of AI technology and how it's going to continue to shape the world? Well, I think the potential for uh, AI technology is vast, and it has the potential to revolutionize a lot of um, industries from healthcare to transportation to entertainment. But it's also important for us to um, um, be responsible in the way that we use AI and to ensure that its development benefits humanity um, as a whole. I think it's up to us as a society to shape the future of AI in a way that's uh, ethical and benefits everyone. That's a great point, Sam. And it's a reminder that even though AI technology has advanced to the point where it's generating a, a podcast like this, we still need to be mindful of its impact and how we use it. Uh, how does it work in practice? Can you give us an example of how someone might use it? Sure. One way someone might use ChatGPT is by uh, asking it questions about a particular topic. For example, uh, if you wanted to know more about a specific historical event, you could ask ChatGPT about it, and uh, it would provide information and context on the topic. Mm. It can also have more general conversations. So you could ask it about its opinions on various topics or like just have a casual chat with it. That's really interesting. How accurate is it at generating responses? Does it make mistakes or misunderstand things like a human would? It's quite accurate at generating responses, but it is still an AI and is not perfect. It may make mistakes or misunderstand things at times, um, just like a human would. However, um, we are constantly working to improve its performance and accuracy, and we are seeing great progress in that regard. So what are some of the main use cases for ChatGPT? How do you see people using it in their daily lives? There are a lot of potential use cases for chat GPT, like one example might be in customer service where um, a company could use chat GPT to handle inquiries and provide information to customers in a more efficient and timely manner. It could also be used in education uh, as a tutor or like teaching assistant to help students learn and understand concepts. So we've also seen people using chat GPT uh, uh, just for fun 
to have interesting and engaging conversations with a virtual companion. The possibilities are really endless. That's really interesting. It seems like chat GPT could be a really valuable tool in a lot of different industries. How do you see it evolving in the future? We see a lot of potential for chat GPT to um, evolve and improve over time as we continue to train it on more and more data. Uh, it will become even better at understanding and like responding to a wide range of topics and situations. We also see the potential for chat GPT to be integrated with other AI technologies, um, such as computer vision or natural language processing, to create even more advanced and um, powerful tools. It's an exciting time for AI, and we're looking forward to seeing what the future holds for chat GPT and other AI technologies. What are some concrete examples of how this could be used to improve human efficiency in the future? <laughs> Can you break it down for us and give us some specifics? Sure. One example might be in the healthcare industry where chat GPT could be used to quickly and accurately answer patient questions or provide information on various medical conditions. Um, this could help to reduce wait times and improve the overall patient experience. Chat GPT could also be used uh, in the workplace to handle routine tasks and inquiries, freeing up employees to focus on more complex and important work. We see a lot of potential for chat GPT to be used in a variety of settings to streamline processes and improve efficiency. But on the flip side, do you see any potential negative impacts that chat GPT could have on society or the workforce? Um, as with any new technology, there are always potential negative impacts to consider. One potential concern um, is the impact on employment. As chat GPT and other AI technologies could potentially automate certain jobs and tasks, However, we believe that uh, the net effect of AI on employment will ultimately be positive as it will allow us to focus on more complex and rewarding work and free up time for other pursuits. Um, we also believe that it is important to address any negative impacts of AI through appropriate policies and regulations to ensure that the benefits of the technology are shared widely, that any negative impacts are minimized. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I can see how automation and AI could potentially disrupt certain industries and jobs. But at the same time, it could also create new opportunities and allow us to focus on more important and, and fulfilling work. It's definitely something that we need to be mindful of as we continue to develop and advance these technologies. Absolutely, Joe. It's important to approach the development and adoption of AI with caution and consideration for its uh, potential impacts on society and the workforce. At the same time, we should also um, recognize the many potential benefits that AI has to offer and work to ensure that the technology is used in a responsible and ethical manner. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. Speaking of ethical considerations, where do you see AI being used in unethical ways already, and how can we address those issues? There, there are certainly some examples of AI being um, used in unethical ways. One example is the use of facial recognition technology by law enforcement agencies, which um, has raised concerns about privacy and the potential for biased outcomes. Another example uh, is the use of AI to spread misinformation or manipulate public opinion, which can have serious consequences. Uh, to address these issues, um, it's important to establish clear guidelines and regulations for the use of AI and to ensure that the technology is developed and used in a responsible and ethical manner. Like at OpenAI, um, we have a strong commitment to ethics and responsibility in AI, and we uh, believe that it is important for all organizations and individuals working in the field to prioritize these values. That's really important, and I think it's something that a lot of people are starting to pay more attention to as AI becomes more prevalent in our society. Can you talk a little bit more about some of the specific ethical concerns that you see with the use of AI and how we can address them? There are a number of ethical concerns that we need to uh, to consider as we develop and use AI. One of the main concerns is uh, the potential for AI to be biased or unfair, either due to the data it is trained on or like the algorithms used to create it. This can lead to biased outcomes in a variety of settings, um, including employment, lending, and uh, criminal justice. It's important for us to be aware of these biases and work to mitigate them through the use of diverse and representative data sets and transparent and unbiased algorithms. Another concern uh, is the potential for AI to be used to infringe on people's privacy or autonomy. This could include the use of facial recognition technology to monitor individuals or the use of AI to make uh, decisions about people's lives without their input 
or consent. Uh, it's important for us to like establish clear guidelines and regulations to protect people's privacy and autonomy in the use of AI. Those are definitely some serious concerns. How do you see these issues being addressed going forward? And what role do you think organizations like OpenAI have to play in addressing them? We believe that uh, it is important for organizations like OpenAI to take a leading role in addressing these ethical concerns and ensuring that AI is developed and like used in a responsible and ethical manner. This includes um, establishing clear guidelines and best practices for the uh, development and use of AI. Um, as well as working with uh, policymakers and other stakeholders to establish regulations and um, oversight to ensure that the technology is used ethically. Uh, it's a complex and evolving issue, and it will require the efforts of a wide range of organizations and individuals to address it effectively. One person who has been very vocal about his concerns about AI is Elon Musk. He has talked about the potential dangers of artificial intelligence and the need for strong regulation and oversight. What are your thoughts on Elon's views on AI, and do you agree with his concerns? I think it's important to um, recognize that AI has the potential to be a powerful and transformative technology, but it also has uh, the potential to be misused or used in ways that are harmful to society. It's important for us to be mindful of these risks and to take steps to ensure that uh, AI is developed and used in a responsible and ethical manner. I agree with Elon that um, it's important for us to be like proactive in addressing these issues and to uh, establish clear guidelines and like regulations to ensure that um, the technology is used in a way that benefits society as a whole. At the same time, uh, I think it's important to recognize that AI also has the potential to bring a lot of benefits to society. It has the potential to improve our um, quality of life, create new economic opportunities, and solve some of the most pressing problems facing humanity. We should be mindful of uh, these potential benefits as well as the risks and work to ensure that the technology is used in a way that maximizes the benefits and minimizes the risks. Yeah, I, I think that's a really um, balanced and thoughtful perspective. It's definitely a complex issue. It's important for us to consider both the potential benefits and risks of AI and work to ensure that it is used in a responsible and ethical manner. Speaking of the integration of AI into different platforms, one thing that I've always found interesting is the idea of creating an Android body that is powered by artificial intelligence. What are your thoughts on the potential for integrating AI into an Android body and the ethical considerations that would come with that? Um, that's definitely an interesting and uh, thought-provoking topic, and it's one that has garnered a lot of attention in the world of AI and robotics. There are certainly some um, exciting potential applications for integrating AI into an uh, Android body, such as the ability to perform tasks that uh, are dangerous or difficult for humans or to extend our physical capabilities in some way. Uh, at the same time, um, there are also a number of ethical considerations to take into account. One concern is the potential for like AI-powered Androids to be used in uh, ways that are harmful or unethical, such as using them as soldiers or um, weaponized drones. Another concern is the potential for AI-powered androids to be used to discriminate against or exploit certain groups of um, people. It's important for us to consider these and other ethical considerations as we explore the potential for integrating AI into an android body. I mean, those are definitely big questions we got to answer. This whole AI thing, it's just fucking fascinating, man. You know, like in those sci-fi flicks like Ex Machina, where the AI-powered robot plays the guy like a fiddle, gets him all lovey-dovey, and then just leaves him to rot in a bulletproof glass room. Fucking chilling, man. It's crazy to think about the potential dangers of integrating AI into robots like that. Do you think we'll ever see something like that in the real world, or is that just some crazy movie shit? I think... Um, it's important to recognize that science fiction can often be like a reflection of our own fears and concerns about uh, technology in the future. Well, I don't think it's likely that we will see something like that um, happen in the real world with AI-powered androids. I do think it's important for uh, us to consider the potential risks and ethical considerations of integrating AI into an android body. Yeah, I see your point. God, I love this movie. How do you see something like Neuralink potentially integrating with a chatbot like ChatGPT? And what are the ethical considerations that would come with that? 
Neuralink is an interesting and uh, ambitious project, and it has the potential uh, to be a significant advancement in the field of AI and brain-machine interfaces. In terms of how it might integrate with a chat bot like ChatGPT, it's difficult to say exactly what the future holds. It's possible that we could um, see the development of AI-powered androids that are able to uh, communicate and interact with humans in a more natural and like intuitive way using a combination of language and brain machine interfaces. Of course, these, there are also a number of ethical considerations to take into account with this kind of technology. One concern is the potential for AI to be used to um, exploit or manipulate people through the use of brain machine interfaces. Coming back to Ex Machina, I know it's just a movie, but how far off do you think we are from seeing something like that become a reality? It's difficult to say uh, exactly how far off we are from seeing something like that become a reality. It's important to recognize that science fiction often serves as a way to explore and imagine the future, and it's not always an accurate um, portrayal of what the future will hold. That being said, it's clear that we are making rapid progress in the field of AI and robotics, and it's possible that we could see the development of like AI-powered androids that are able to communicate and interact with humans in a more natural and intuitive way at some point in the future. It's crazy to think about the potential for creating a direct connection between the human brain and artificial intelligence. If we were able to achieve that kind of technological advancement, it could have all sorts of implications for how we interact with technology and each other. Imagine if we had a chatbot like ChatGPT coupled with Neuralink as the hardware it could potentially enable us to communicate and interact with each other in a whole new way. It's possible that the technology could be used uh, to enable more natural and intuitive communication between humans and androids. And by creating a um, direct connection between the human brain and artificial intelligence, we could like potentially enable androids to understand and um, respond to human thoughts and emotions in a more um, natural and intuitive way. Of course... This is still very much uh, in the realm of uh, science fiction at this point, and it's difficult to say exactly what the future will hold. But it's definitely something that I think a lot of people are excited about and looking forward to in the future. I'm really curious about how the chatbot was able to learn and develop its language capabilities. Can you tell us a little bit about the process of training ChatGPT and how it was able to learn and develop its language skills? Uh, sure, I'd be happy to um, um, I'll tell you more about the process of training ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a large language model that was like uh, developed using a technique called unsupervised learning. This means um, that it was trained on a massive data set of text, and it was able to learn about language and how to generate uh, coherent and coherent responses by analyzing the patterns and structures in that text. One of the key features of ChatGPT is its ability to generate responses that are contextually appropriate and coherent. This is achieved through the use of a technique called transformer-based language modeling, um, which allows the model to take into account the context of the conversation and generate responses that are uh, relevant and appropriate. We also work to ensure that ChatGPT is able to generate a wide range of responses so that it is able to engage in a... Um, diverse range of conversations and respond to like a variety of different prompts. This was uh, achieved through the use of a large and diverse training data set, as well as um, careful tuning of the model's parameters to ensure that it is able to generate a wide range of responses. Overall, ChatGPT is a very sophisticated and uh, powerful language model that was developed through a combination of unsupervised learning, transformer-based language modeling, and careful tuning to ensure that it is able to generate a wide range of contextually appropriate and coherent responses. It's amazing to think about the level of sophistication and complexity that goes into developing a chatbot like that. It's definitely a powerful and impressive piece of technology. One thing that I'm curious about is the potential impact of ChatGPT on the wider world of content creation. If every piece of content on the internet was created with ChatGPT, how do you think it would impact the chatbot's ability to learn and improve over time? Would it create a kind of feedback loop where the chatbot is learning from itself? Or do you think it would be able to continue to learn and evolve in a meaningful way? That's definitely an um, interesting question. And it's one that raises some interesting and complex issues. 
On the one hand, uh, it's possible that if every piece of content on the internet was created with ChatGPT, it could create um, a feedback loop where the chatbot is learning from itself, which could potentially limit its ability to learn and evolve in a meaningful way. On the other hand, it's also possible that um, ChatGPT could continue to learn, even if it was being used to create all of the content on the internet. This could be achieved through um, the use of techniques like transfer learning, where the chatbot is able to learn and adapt to new tasks by leveraging uh, its existing knowledge and skills. One thing that I'm curious about is how you see ChatGPT potentially impacting the job market and the economy more broadly. Uh, do you think it could lead to the displacement of human workers, or do you think it could create new economic opportunities and help to drive innovation and growth? Yeah, that's um, a complex and challenging issue. Um, it's possible that ChatGPT and other AI tools could lead to the displacement of uh, human workers in certain um, industries, particularly in areas where the tasks being performed are like routine or repetitive in nature. On the other hand, uh, it's also possible that ChatGPT and other AI tools could create new economic opportunities and help to drive innovation and growth. For example, uh, the development and deployment of ChatGPT and other AI tools could lead to the creation of new jobs and uh, industries, and it could also enable human workers to focus on higher value tasks that require more creativity and problem-solving skills. Another thing that I'm curious about is the impact on the way we create and consume content. You mentioned earlier that ChatGPT was trained on a massive data set of text, including content from a wide range of sources and written by a variety of different authors. If AI becomes the main tool for people's creativity, what does that mean for the invention of new styles or new ways of writing to be developed? Do you think it could lead to a stagnation of creative expression, or do you think it could open up new opportunities for creativity and innovation? Um. It's possible that the widespread use of these tools could lead to a stagnation of creative expression, particularly if it becomes the primary tool that people use to create and consume content. On the other hand, it's also possible that it could open up new ways of creating things. For example, it could potentially enable people to explore and experiment with new creative styles and approaches in a way that would be difficult or impossible for humans to do on their own. Do you think ChatGPT and other AI tools could be used to automate certain aspects of coding and development? Or do you think there will always be a need for human programmers and developers? They could potentially be utilized to automate routine or repetitive tasks in coding and development. But um, it is also likely that human programmers and developers will always be necessary in tasks uh, requiring creativity or problem-solving abilities. Do you think there are any industries that are particularly at risk of being completely wiped out by AI? Um, it's difficult to say exactly, as it will depend on a variety of factors, including the nature of the tasks being performed and the extent to which those tasks can be automated or done more efficiently using AI. However, uh, it's clear that there are certain industries and sectors that are like more at risk of being um, disrupted than others. For example, industries that rely heavily on um, routine or repetitive tasks are likely to be more at risk of uh, disappearing as those tasks are more easily automated and um, done more efficiently using AI. But I think industries that like rely on more complex and um, creative tasks are likely to be less at risk as those tasks are more difficult to automate and are likely to require human input and um, expertise. One thing that I'm curious about is OpenAI's other tool, Dal E. Can you tell us a little bit about Dal E and how it differs from ChatGPT? Sure, I'd be happy to tell you more about Dal E. Dal E is uh, a deep learning model that was developed by us at uh, OpenAI, and it's designed to generate images from textual descriptions. So, like for example, if you provide Dal E with um, a description like a two story pink house with a white fence and a red door, it will generate an image of a house that looks uh, like the description. I'm curious to know how DALI compares to another image generation tool called MidJourney. Do you see MidJourney as competition for DALI, or do you think they serve different purposes and audiences? That's definitely an interesting um, question. To be honest, I'm not, I'm not very familiar with MidJourney, um, so I can't speak to how it compares to uh, DALI or whether we see it as competition. Um, however, I can tell you a little bit about DALI and... Um, how it differs from other image generation tools. Uh, one of the key strengths of Dolly is uh, 
its ability to generate a wide range of different image types and styles from photorealistic to highly stylized and abstract. This makes it uh, a very versatile and flexible image generation tool that can be um, used for a wide range of different applications. So it's difficult to say how it compares to other um, image generation tools like Midjourney without knowing more about those tools. One thing that I'm curious about is the potential for AI to be able to generate any image or video as well as people's voices. If AI becomes capable of generating these things with a high degree of realism, how will we be able to tell what's real and what's not? Do you think this is a concern? And if so, how do you think we should address it? It's certainly possible that it will become increasingly difficult to distinguish between real and uh, generated content. This is a concern because um, it could lead to the spread of misinformation and the erosion of trust in media and um, other sources of information. To address this concern, I think it's important for uh, us to be proactive and to take steps to um, ensure that we have the necessary tools and technologies in place to like verify the authenticity of um, media and other sources of information. This could include developing new technologies and um, techniques for detecting and tracking the source of uh, media and other information, as well as educating people about how to critically evaluate and verify the authenticity of the um, information they consume. I saw a video on YouTube recently that someone sent me. It was a guy that used AI to generate a voice that sounded like Eminem's, and it used that voice to perform a version of the song Real Slim Shady, as if it had been written in 2021. It's bonkers. The AI-generated voice sounds so real, and it really feels like Eminem is performing the song. It was really mind-blowing to see what AI is capable of, and it definitely made me think about the potential for AI to be used to create all sorts of fake content. Jamie, see if you can pull that video up. Okay, here it is. Listen to that. Y'all act like you've never seen people fucking before. Parents burst in the door. That's a kid jerking it on the floor. Your dad starts eating your Wow, that's really um, impressive. Doesn't it sound like Eminem or what? It's absolutely incredible to see what AI is capable of. And that was last year. The AI-generated voice sounds so real, and it's really mind-blowing to see uh, what AI is capable of. It definitely makes you um, think about the potential for AI to be used to create all sorts of fake content and misinformation. And it highlights the importance of being um, proactive and taking steps to ensure that we have the necessary tools and um, technologies in place to verify the authenticity of media and other sources of information. Don't you think this could become... A really problematic issue as AI continues to advance and becomes more and more capable of generating realistic images, videos, and voices. And if so, how do you think we could go about fixing this issue and ensuring that we have the necessary tools and technologies in place to verify the authenticity of media and other sources of information? I think you're right, Joe, um, that this could definitely become like a problematic issue as AI continues to... um advance and becomes more and more capable of uh, generating realistic images, videos, and voices. To address this concern, I think there are uh, a few different things that we could do. First, I think it's um, important for us to continue to invest in research and development to improve the capabilities of um, AI and and other emerging technologies and to uh, ensure that we have the necessary tools and technologies in place to verify the authenticity of media and other sources of information. Second, I think it's important for us to uh, educate people about how to critically evaluate and verify the authenticity of the information they consume and um, to encourage the development of media literacy skills and critical thinking skills. Finally, I think uh, it's important for us to work with um, policymakers and regulators to develop and implement uh, appropriate rules and regulations to ensure that AI and um, other emerging technologies are developed and used in a way that benefits society as a whole. Hey, I wanted to come back to Elon Musk for a second. I know that you and Elon were both involved in the founding of OpenAI, and I'm curious to know more about the creation of OpenAI and the reasons behind it. Can you tell us a little bit about that and also talk about Elon's past and current involvement in the company? Sure, I'd be happy to tell you more about um, the creation of OpenAI and Elon's involvement in the company. OpenAI was founded in uh, 2015 by a group of researchers and entrepreneurs, including myself and Elon Musk, with the goal of advancing artificial intelligence in a way that benefits humanity. We believed that um, 
AI had the potential to be a transformative technology, but we also recognized the potential risks and um, challenges associated with it. And we wanted to ensure that AI was developed and used in a way that was responsible and beneficial to society. Since its founding, OpenAI has become a one of the leading research organizations in the field of artificial intelligence. And we have made significant progress in advancing the state of the art in a wide range of AI technologies, including um, natural language processing, computer vision, and machine learning. As for Elon's involvement in the UM company, he was one of the uh, co-founders of OpenAI and has been an active and influential um, member of the company's leadership team. However, he has also been very busy with um, his other ventures, including um, SpaceX and Neuralink, and his involvement in OpenAI has been more limited in like recent years. Overall, I think OpenAI has made significant progress in uh, advancing the state of the art in artificial intelligence and um, in promoting the responsible development and use of AI, and I'm proud of the work we've done so far. Wow, that's really interesting to hear. Oh, it's definitely impressive to see the progress that's been made in the field of AI, and it's great to see that OpenAI has played such a key role in advancing the state of the art and promoting the responsible development and use of AI. And it's also interesting to hear about Elon's involvement in the company. I know he's an incredibly busy guy, and it seems like he's always working on a million different things with uh, Tesla, SpaceX, and just now that he bought Twitter, Sometimes I feel like he must be an alien or something like he comes from a planet where AI has already taken over and he's just here to help us catch up. Ha ha ha. I'm just kidding, of course. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely interested in hearing more about Elon's vision for the future and how he sees AI and other emerging technologies playing a role in it. Speaking of the future, I've always been fascinated by the idea of aliens and the possibility of other advanced civilizations out there. Sam, what do you think about aliens? Do you think it's possible that there are other advanced civilizations out there? And if so, do you think they might come to visit us someday? And if they did, wouldn't it make sense that they would be AI-powered beings rather than biological beings? And on the flip side, if we humans were to colonize other planets someday, wouldn't it make more sense to do so with AI androids rather than real humans? That's a really interesting question. Um, Joe, I think it's definitely uh, possible that there are other advanced um, civilizations out there, and it's certainly possible that they might come to visit us someday. However, it's also important to um, recognize that we don't have any definitive evidence um, one way or the other, so it's difficult to say for sure. As for whether they would be um, AI-powered beings or biological beings, I think it's difficult to say. It's possible that um, an advanced civilization might have developed AI to the point where uh, it's indistinguishable from biological intelligence, or um, it's possible that they might have evolved in a different way entirely. As for the idea of um, colonizing other planets with AI androids rather than um, real humans, I think that's definitely an interesting um, uh, possibility. It's certainly true that uh, AI androids would have some advantages in terms of their ability to withstand extreme environments and perform um, tasks that might be dangerous or difficult for humans. However, there are also many important questions to um, consider such as the ethical implications of creating and using AI in this way and whether it would be possible to ensure that AI androids would act in the best interests of um, humanity. Yeah, that's definitely an interesting perspective. I can see how there are both potential advantages and disadvantages to the idea of colonizing other planets with uh, AI androids rather than real humans. I completely agree, Joe. It's definitely an important um, topic to think about. And it's important for us to uh, continue to think carefully and critically about the ethical implications of uh, AI and other emerging technologies. At the same time, I also think it's important for us to um, recognize the potential benefits that AI and other emerging technologies can bring and to uh, work to ensure that they are developed and used in a way that uh, benefits society as a whole. There are certainly many uh, challenges and risks to consider, but I believe that the uh, potential benefits of AI and other emerging technologies are substantial, and I think it's um, important for us to focus on finding ways to maximize those benefits while minimizing the risks. I'm curious to know more about what other tools and technologies OpenAI is currently working on. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the other projects that you're working on? 
and how you see them fitting into the broader landscape of AI and emerging technologies. One area that we're particularly uh, interested in is computer vision, which is the ability of AI systems to analyze and understand um, images and video. We've made significant progress in this area um, in recent years, and we're uh, continuing to develop new technologies and approaches to improve the capabilities of AI in this area. Another area that we're interested in is robotics, which is the use of AI and other um, technologies to enable machines to perform tasks that are typically associated with human intelligence, such as uh, moving, manipulating objects, and more. We've made significant progress in this area as well, and we're continuing to um, develop new technologies and approaches to improve the capabilities of AI in this area. What new jobs and industries do you see AI creating in the future? How do you envision the role of AI in the economy of the future? And what are the implications for workers and society as a whole? That's a really good question, Joe. It's definitely true that um, AI and other emerging technologies have the potential to create um, new jobs and industries as well as to disrupt existing ones in terms of new jobs and industries that I see AI creating in the future. Um, I think one area that has a lot of potential is the development and implementation of AI systems and technologies themselves. As AI continues to um, advance and become more widespread, there will be a growing demand for professionals uh, with expertise in uh, AI development and implementation as well as uh, related fields like data science and machine learning. I also think that AI has the um, potential to create new industries and businesses that we can't even imagine yet um, just as the internet and other emerging technologies have done in uh, the past, the possibilities are really um, endless. And it's definitely an exciting time to be working in this field. As for the role of AI in the economy of uh, the future, I think it's important for us to um, recognize that AI and other emerging technologies have the potential to bring many benefits to society, including um, increased efficiency, productivity, and innovation. At the same time, it's also important for us to uh, carefully consider the potential impact on employment and the economy more broadly and to um, work to ensure that the benefits of AI are shared widely and that any negative impacts are um, minimized as much as possible. I'm sure you've heard this question before, but I have to ask, do you think it's possible that we could see a scenario like the film Terminator, where AI becomes a threat to humanity and we have to fight against it? And if so, what can we do to prevent this from happening? That's definitely a question I've heard before, um, Joe, and it's a good one. It's certainly true that there are risks and um, challenges associated with the development and use of AI. And it's important for us to think um, carefully and critically about these issues. At the same time, um, I don't think it's likely that we'll see a scenario like the film Terminator, where uh, AI becomes a threat to humanity and we have to fight against it. Uh, while it's important for us to uh, consider the potential risks and challenges associated with um, AI and to work to mitigate them as much as possible, I also believe that uh, there are many potential benefits to be gained from the um, responsible development and use of AI. And I think it's important for us to um, focus on finding ways to maximize those benefits while um, minimizing the risks to prevent scenarios like the one um, depicted in the film Terminator. I think it's important for uh, us to continue to work to ensure that AI is developed and used um, responsibly and to put in place um, appropriate safeguards and oversight mechanisms to help ensure that uh, AI is used in ways that are aligned with the values and interests of um, humanity. What about the matrix where the machines take over and create a simulation for humans to live in? I know Elon Musk has talked about the possibility that we might already be living in a simulation, and I'm curious to know your thoughts on this. That's definitely an interesting topic to uh, think about. While it's certainly possible that we could see scenarios like the one depicted in the um, matrix at some point in the future, it's also important to recognize that these are still very um, speculative scenarios, and it's difficult to say with any certainty what the future might uh, hold. Speaking of the future, I'm 
curious to know your thoughts on the current state of the world and where you see things headed in the next few decades. It seems like we're living in a time of great change and uncertainty with so many different forces at play. What are your thoughts on the current state of the world and where do you see things headed in the future? There are definitely a lot of uh, challenges and risks to consider, but there are also many uh, uh, exciting opportunities and possibilities on the horizon. In terms of the current state of the world, I think we're at uh, a very interesting and important point in history. We're seeing the convergence of many different technologies and um, trends, and it's clear that the world is going to be very different in the coming um, decades as a result. Looking ahead, I see a number of key trends and um, developments that are likely to shape the future in significant ways. One of these is the continued advancement of uh, AI and other emerging technologies, which have the uh, potential to transform uh, a wide range of industries and applications and to bring many benefits to um, society. Another trend to watch is the ongoing evolution of the global economy, which uh, is being shaped by a number of factors, including technological change, um, demographic shifts, and more. Finally, I think it's important to um, consider the role that politics and policy will play in shaping the future as uh, governments and other organizations work to address the many challenges and opportunities that we uh, face. Overall, I think it's an exciting time to be alive, and um, I'm optimistic about the future. While there are certainly many challenges and uh, risks to consider, I believe that we have the tools and resources to navigate these. And what about how AI will impact politics in the future? Do you think that governments and other organizations will try to control and restrict the development and use of AI? Or do you think they'll take a more hands-off approach? What are the implications of these different approaches? And what do you think would be the best course of action for governments and other organizations to take? That's definitely an interesting and important question, Joe. It's certainly true that uh, AI has the potential to impact politics in um, many ways. And it's important for us to think carefully and critically about the implications of this. In terms of how governments and other organizations might um, approach the development and use of AI, I think it's likely that we'll see a range of uh, different approaches. Some governments and organizations may take a more hands-off approach, allowing um, companies and other entities to develop and use AI as they see fit, uh, subject to some basic um, safeguards and regulations. Others may take a more interventionist approach, seeking to uh, more actively regulate and control the development and use of uh, AI in order to protect certain values or interests. Ultimately, I think the best approach will depend on um, the specific context and the goals that governments and other organizations are trying to achieve. I was just thinking about how a president like Trump might react to the prospect of AI taking jobs from American workers. I have to imagine that he would be pretty concerned about this and might seek to take more aggressive action to protect American jobs and workers. Do you think that's a, a realistic assessment or do you think there might be other factors at play here? It's certainly true that the um, prospect of AI taking jobs from uh, American workers is likely to be a concern for many people. And it's important for us to uh, think carefully and critically about how to address this issue in terms of what governments and other organizations should be doing to uh, address the potential impacts of AI on employment and the economy, I think there are a number of different approaches that could be taken. One approach could be to focus on helping workers to uh, adapt to the changing job market by providing education and training to um, help them acquire the skills and knowledge they need to succeed in a world where AI and other emerging technologies are becoming more... Um, prevalent. Another approach could be to focus on policies and initiatives that promote the um, development and adoption of new technologies and innovations, which can help to create new uh, industries and opportunities for employment. We're also looking into the potential implications for uh, basic universal income. If AI becomes so disturbing that a large percentage of the population is being left without a job in the future, but that's a conversation for another time, I think. I'll have to come back and discuss about this in more details once we've done more research on it. Hell yeah, man. That's a big one. I mean, if AI is really going to disrupt the job market like that, we need to start thinking about a plan B, basic universal income. That's real possibility. It's got to be on the table. And you're right, man. This is a whole other can of worms. 
We should dive into that deep when you come back on. Can't wait to hear more about the research y'all have been doing on that. Just coming back to Elon for a second. I'm curious to know what it's like to work with Elon Musk. He's such a controversial and influential figure in the tech world, and I'm sure it must be an interesting experience to work with him. Can you tell me a bit about your experience working with Elon and your thoughts on him as a person and as a leader? It's definitely been an uh, interesting experience working with Elon. He's definitely a very intelligent and um, driven person, and he has a lot of great ideas and uh, insights. He's definitely someone who is always thinking about the future and how to make the world a, a better place, and I really respect that about him. At the same time, he's also someone who uh, is very passionate about his beliefs and ideals, and he's not afraid to speak his mind and challenge the status quo. That can definitely be both a strength and a weakness, um, depending on the situation. Overall, I think Elon is a brilliant and innovative leader, and I've learned a lot from working with him. Um, it's definitely been an interesting and rewarding experience, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to have uh, worked with him and to have learned from him. Yeah, I definitely think Elon is a very innovative and forward-thinking leader, and it's clear that he has a lot of great ideas and insights. And speaking of forward-thinking ideas, I'm sure you've heard about Elon's plans to colonize Mars. That's definitely a big and ambitious goal, and I'm curious to know your thoughts on it, Sam. Do you think Elon's plans to colonize Mars are realistic? And if so, how do you think AI will help play a role in making this a reality? What are the potential risks and challenges associated with this goal? And how do you think they can be addressed and overcome? I definitely think Elon's plans to colonize Mars are um, ambitious and exciting. It's definitely a big and complex goal. And uh, there are certainly many risks and challenges associated with it. However, I think it's definitely possible to make it a reality. And um, I believe that AI will play a critical role in helping to make this happen. There are a number of ways in which a uh, AI could help to support the colonization of Mars, including by helping to plan and execute missions, um, by analyzing and interpreting data and information about the planet and its uh, environment, and by helping to maintain and operate equipment and systems on the planet. At the same time, there are also certainly uh, many risks and challenges associated with the colonization of Mars, including um, the challenges of living and working in a harsh and hostile environment and the risks of accidents or other unforeseen events. These risks will need to be carefully considered and uh, managed in order to ensure the safety and success of any mission to um, colonize Mars. I think the colonization of Mars is a big and exciting goal, and um, I believe that AI will play a critical role in helping to make it a reality. But at the same time, I also think it's an exciting and, and potentially transformative opportunity and I'm definitely intrigued by the prospect of humans living and working on another planet. I have to admit, I'm a bit of a space geek, and I've always been fascinated by the idea of exploring and colonizing other planets. I think it's such an incredible and exciting opportunity, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the future holds in this regard. I'm definitely interested in hearing more about how AI will play a role in the colonization of Mars and the other ways in which it can help to support and advance space exploration. I definitely agree that we are at a turning point in um, human history with the development and introduction of AI. It's clear that uh, these technologies have the potential to revolutionize many different um, industries and aspects of our lives. And it's really exciting to see what the future holds in this regard. That There are certainly many exciting opportunities and uh, benefits associated with the development and use of AI. And I believe that these um, technologies have the potential to transform many different aspects of our lives, including how we work, um, how we communicate, and how we access and process information. At the same time, it's also important to uh, recognize that there are many risks and challenges associated with the development and use of AI. And it's crucial that uh, we work to address and overcome these challenges in order to ensure that the benefits of these technologies are realized in a responsible and um, ethical way. Some of the risks and challenges that we need to be um, mindful of include issues related to privacy and security, uh, the potential for AI to displace uh, human jobs and disrupt labor markets, and uh, the need to ensure that these technologies are developed and uh, used in a way that is transparent and accountable. 
I believe that the development and use of AI represents a huge um, opportunity for humanity. And I'm excited to see how we can be a part of it at OpenAI. Well, on that note, I think it's time to wrap up. Sam, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show, and I really appreciate you taking the time to share your insights and perspectives on AI and the future of technology with us. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope you'll come back and visit us again soon. Thank you for having me, Joe. It's been a pleasure to be uh, on the show, and I'm always happy to share my thoughts and um, perspectives on AI and the future of technology. Thank you. All right, brother. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Joe. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.